All over the world, rice is a staple food of the people. Over the last 20 years, rice production in Africa has increased by 4% per annum. But consumption has increased faster. So Africa is forced to import large quantities of rice. Imported rice can be rice that's been produced five years ago. So the time imported rice is produced and the moment we eat it in Benin will take at least five years. So this rice is old compared to the local rice. Therefore, my choice is made. I prefer living rice, rice that's produced in Benin. We can be sure this rice has all the qualities we're looking for in rice. That is, all the nutritional values. Even though the rice produced in Africa often has superior cooking characteristics to the imported rice, several practices reduce the quality. To convince African consumers to eat local rice, it's imperative to prevent deterioration in quality. Among the factors affecting rice quality are varietal mixture, harvest date, impurities such as stones, and drying and storage conditions. Here we'll learn how to avoid devaluing the local rice. To ensure good quality rice, you must start right from sowing by avoiding the use of a mixture of varieties. The chairman of Central Benin's Rice Farmers Union stresses why this is important. When one wants to grow rice, they go to the market or they buy rice from the neighbor or from any source. So there's already a mixture of varieties in the field. When this mixture is milled, depending on the calibration of the grader, if this is large, the finest grains pass through without being dehusked, and the biggest grains will be broken before coming out of the machine. Because you take a mixture to the miller, you can be sure you'll get a heterogeneous rice. That's obvious. So the seed problem must be solved, and producers have to learn that rice is not like maize, where yellow, red, white grains can all be mixed. But rice, it needs to be selected. The rice field needs to be divided into plots, according to varieties, so that it makes milling easy and effective. This is very important. This seed is from a single variety. It's only from this type of seed that a homogeneous harvest can be obtained and therefore there's a standard product after milling. The picture on the right shows a mixture of varieties. With such seed we obtain a harvest that turns out a poor product after milling. So it's very important to avoid mixing varieties right from sowing. It's also recommended to separate the various varieties immediately after harvest, to thresh them and store them separately. Because during milling, a mixture produces a non-standard product. Apart from high amounts of unmilled and broken grains, mixtures are also hard to cook, because each variety has its own cooking time. So to satisfy the consumer, Avoid mixing the varieties at all stages. Harvesting at the right time also helps maintain the quality of the final product. When we harvest too early, the paddy contains a lot of green grains, 
and during milling they turn into flour. In this way you lose a lot of rice and therefore a lot of money. Rice production demands a lot of work and without care we cannot obtain a good product. The harvest must not be delayed until the panicles are too dry because during milling the overdry paddy will only produce broken grains. The right harvesting time for rice is generally five weeks after flowering or five weeks after the appearance of the panicle, which is a characteristic easily detectable by farmers. At this stage, also the color in the grains change. The green will turn straw-like, yellow or even gold, depending on the variety. And generally, when 80% of the field has changed color, we can start harvesting. To ensure good quality rice, ensure you harvest at the right time. During threshing, stones and other impurities can get in. To avoid this, prepare a clean threshing floor. It may be a tarpaulin, bag sewn together, a cemented or compacted floor. Farmers in Bangladesh even thresh on a table enclosed by bags sewn together. Threshing can be done by several methods, manually, or the use of pedal and power threshers. Regardless of the method used, threshing must always be done on a clean floor. Let's hear about an innovative example of hand threshing. Some farmers in the Weme Valley gather the panicles and thresh them on a barrel inside a mosquito net calmly, and the grains will not escape. They stay in the net. This is an initiative of a farmer who doesn't have a thresher. So to avoid the contact with the soil and other debris, they spread the nets and thresh in them. After threshing, carefully pick the grains and winnow them on a clean floor. Winnow the paddy several times and make sure no weed seeds remain. After cleaning the paddy of all impurities, it's important to dry it on a clean floor. We use the tarpaulin to dry the paddy to prevent stones from getting in. Avoid drying on the bare floor or by the roadside because stones and other impurities can get in. Now this is here from the director of the Songhai Center, an NGO involved in rice sector development in Africa. Quality rice could be sold twice the price, so it is very, very important for them to invest themselves in producing rice of quality, making sure the sand is not there, the unripe rice is not there, so that the consumer who is becoming more and more demanding will like to go. Now that we've learned how to avoid mixing varieties, to harvest at the right time, and to avoid impurities, let's see what effect the water content has on the grains during milling. Grains that are too dry have cracks and break during milling. The cracks are so small that they can't be seen with the naked eye. This phenomenon is comparable to clay cracking in the sun. When the rice is too dry, it breaks. That's why it's tested every time by rubbing it in the palms of the hands. In this way, we avoid drying it too much. If the sun is too high, dry the rice for only a few hours in the open air. Turn over the paddy from time to time to dry it evenly. And if possible, continue to dry it afterwards in the shade. Dry until the grains have an acceptable moisture content. Let's see how women in a Benin village test this. 
To know that the paddy is dry, we take some and rub it between the palms of our hands. We also test it with our teeth. When it breaks with a dry crack, then the paddy is dry. And if you think that after proper drying, the quality is guaranteed, no way. Storage also determines the quality of the rice, because during storage, the paddy can become moist again. When the paddy is stored directly on a cement floor, it absorbs moisture and then goes mouldy. When the paddy is kept in a bag and stored on dry wood, its conservation is good and it doesn't go mouldy. As we've just heard from an experienced trader, you should always store paddy on materials that support and isolate it from the ground. Avoid storing bags on rusted iron. Also, leave a gap between the bags to allow air to circulate and make pest control easier. As we saw, the quality of the rice improves when we avoid varietal mixtures and impurities. We must also harvest at the right time and ensure good drying and paddy storage. Handling the paddy well before milling helps to avoid huge losses and ensures quality. As you may well be aware by now, good quality rice requires commitment and a lot of discipline. It is important for we Africans to really invest ourselves in quality production. That culture of success, culture of quality is very important for us to push back all the dumping from outside. If we don't do it, whether it's African, whether it's from my mother's kitchen, people are not going to buy it. So we have to come to the left to be competitive. We have to develop competitive advantage. And quality is the most important element in competitive advantage. And it's at our reach, within our reach, we can do it. African rice has excellent nutritional and cooking characteristics. To ensure that the final product is attractive to the consumer, its quality must be guaranteed at all times. Rice farmers, traders, processors and consumers, we all have everything to gain from protecting the quality of our rice.